Question for you. Are there secrets that only rich entrepreneurs know? And the answer is, hell yeah. The second question is, do they keep those secrets hidden on purpose? And again, the answer is, hell yeah. I got a uh, entrepreneur acquaintance of mine who makes like $50 million a year. This guy's rich. And um, he, I was talking to him, this is crazy. He said, there's like some blogs and stuff where people in his industry post what's working for them and they share it with different entrepreneurs. And he goes on there and he posts, he told me, the exact opposite of what's working for him. So, and I said, why the hell do you do that? He says, because it throws him off track. So he don't want any competitors, so he sure as heck is never sharing anything. But on the flip side, you know, one of my uh, mentors, Alan Nation, he told me, he said, Ty, go ahead and share everything you do because most people are so cocky, they'll rarely copy you. You know, like Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. So with that in mind, I share a lot of stuff here, you know, free social media and stuff. But I'm gonna give you a few insider tips that only the richest of the rich entrepreneurs really understand. You might have heard some of them before, but in terms of actually doing them, it's very rare to find anybody except guys that I know that are doing eight figures or beyond. So number one, uh, at the end of the day, marketing trumps all. You know, Steve Jobs and Apple ended up beating Microsoft in terms of largest market cap company, biggest company in the world now. How'd they do it? Steve Jobs was a better marketer. Just look at the Apple stores. You ever been in a micro, there's a Microsoft store at Century City here in Beverly Hills or, or next to Beverly Hills. And it's a ugly ass store. Nobody's ever in it. You go over to the Apple store and it's just a work of art. Everything's beautiful. It's perfectly packaged. And at the end of the day, marketing is, is packaging, you know? So there used to be that old Ralph Waldo Emerson saying where if you can make a better chair or you know cook better, there'll be a long, hard, well-beaten path to your door, even if it's in the middle of the woods. Meaning, if you've got something good, even if uh, you don't market it, somebody will find you. Well, that might have been true in the late 1800s when he wrote that quote, but it's definitely not true now. In the world we live in, there's literally billions, billions of websites and web pages, even more probably. So how the heck are people going to find you if you're not extremely skilled at marketing? And when I say extremely skilled, I'm talking about um, the ability to have people that you don't know globally talking about you. That's how you know you've hit the pinnacle of marketing. And you see this whether it's in politics. You guys saw I got to interview Hillary Clinton. I'm not really a Hillary Clinton supporter, but I talked to her on books. Whether you love her or hate her, her, word, her name is on lips around the world. Everybody is the same, uh, is in kind of the same boat here who's on the top. They're staying in front of people. So you gotta ask yourself, as an entrepreneur, are you staying in front of a, your potential clientele at a continual basis? Not just a little marketing campaign here and there, but are they talking about you? Because if the answer is no, then you don't know what elite entrepreneurs know. Little garden I planted here. Oh, by the way, check out this new shirt. I got this t-shirt brand. It says, the thing about smart people is they sound crazy to dumb people. <laughs> I think that's an old Einstein quote. Um, so the number two thing is that you gotta have a team and the team has to be a minimal, uh, let me get out of the sun here, minimum viable size. I think if you don't have at least 10 people in your company, you're vastly outperforming uh, or underperforming. And so there's this myth about the solo entrepreneur and oh, this one man or one woman just does it all. Bullshit, that's not how it goes down. Even the great Bill Gates made $70 billion understanding. He said, um, I've never done anything alone. You know, he had Paul Allen at first, then he had uh, Steve Ballmer. So, you need 10 people, minimum. And you don't have to have them all at once, that might sound like a lot, but you gotta be building towards that goal or you won't take advantage of what Henry Ford understood, which is the, spe the skill that comes from special specialization. That's what Henry Ford from Ford Motors figured out, you know, in the early 1900s. There was a tremendous power 
in specialization of skill sets. So how are you gonna be the product person, the marketing person, the finance person, the, the technology person, the inventory person, like that's not viable. And so most entrepreneurs go into this game and they don't understand what these top entrepreneurs know is put together a team. You gotta do it. And if you have no people skills, you better put someone next to you who has the people skill. Number three, and there's about, by the way, there's like a, 10 of these things that I've written down. So I'm gonna be doing a free talk. If any of you wanna hear the full in-depth, I'm gonna give here five or 10 minutes of them uh, to not overwhelm you. But if you, those of you really interested, click, there should be a button here. It'll take you to my website. I've been doing these free talks. The last one had 25,000 people on it in uh, up to 70 countries now. So no matter where you live, you can join in. There's no credit card, there's no fee. It's just these free talks. I like, you know, I learn a lot from the interaction. It's live, you can ask questions, you can comment, you can share your experience. So uh, click the link here. It'll take you to my website. It'll show you the times in your local time zone. Okay, so you'll know when it is. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, there's no credit card or anything. There's no gimmicks to it. You can come in and we'll be going in depth. But let me give you the third one here I'll get out of the sun here uh by the way somebody just sent me there's a grand theft auto character made after me and rick ross they said <laughs> it's on my instagram it's pretty funny people love cars uh so the third principle that top entrepreneurs keep private is understanding the phasing cycles of raising capital you know there's shows like shark tank and stuff like that you guys saw been been uh Mark Cuban was here at the house the other day, and uh, I was <clears throat> I was talking to him. I mean, I was talking about this. Most people raise capital at the very beginning of their business. They're like, oh, I got this idea, I gotta raise capital right now. But that's not really how the game goes, because what happens is, if you raise too much capital too early, you tend to get lazy. And so what's much better is to create a business that has momentum, that's starting to rock and roll. A lot of people want to know, these are really my cars. They're always like, show us the garage. We live in a cynical world. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me cover up my license plates. Get crazy people trying to find out where I live. Um, so the, this third principle, when it comes to finance, you're gonna need capital, okay? You'll need some level, oh, I guess I showed my license plate. Oh, shit. Oof, just stepped on some gravel. Um, so, if you don't understand capital correctly, what ends up happening is you raise capital in a phase when you'll waste it. Uh, it's very easy to waste capital. I had Neil Patel in my accelerator program. I interviewed him and he said, man, his first business, he raised $1 million and he spent a year of his life trying to build. And you know what happened? He's like, I should have raised the million after I had the minimum viable product rocking and rolling. And he didn't. He raised the million dollars. He wasted it all. I've seen that. I've raised capital. So I'm more of a mid-phase capital kind of person, like raise capital a bit later in the game. And elite entrepreneurs know that. There's a few exceptions if you're in a super capital elite. Uh, capital intensive business, you might need to have some level of, uh, you know, uh, capital up front on day one, but very rare that you need that. Or if you're a very experienced entrepreneur, then it makes sense to get capital up front because you've already proven it. You're not going to be lazy to capital because most people capital ends up, um, you know, slowing them down. So, uh, yeah, click the link uh, on my site. I'm going to be talking about these 10 secrets that only these elite entrepreneurs know uh, what I've learned what I've learned from them and you really want to know these things at the end of the day man don't procrastinate life is a game of timing it's a little bit like chess but it's like timed chess and with time chess it's not just about making the right move it's about making the right move in the right time frame and so so many people that I know uh, I'm out here trying to toughen up my feet I used to live with the Amish and there you learn to toughen up. They don't wear shoes in the summer on the farm. So I've got my feet have gotten all tender. So I don't like to be too weak willed. So that's why I'm walking around out here with no shoes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, don't procrastinate, man. That, that's the killer of hopes and dreams. Uh, it's the killer of any motivation you might have intrinsically kind of waiting there. So gather knowledge, 
if this helps you I hope it will read you know listen to this again but click the link I'm gonna be going in depth on these live talks they're pretty cool they've grown the first one I did had like a thousand people now we're getting like 20 25,000 people um, on them so it's kind of cool to watch and a lot of people being helped and uh, more importantly a lot of people seeing the potential that's out there because so many people the reason they're not motivated I read an interesting article on slavery. It's actually a book on slavery and what happens around the world whenever there's been slaves. It's not only because people go, why don't the slaves revolt? You know, I was reading a book about the Incas in South America who were enslaved by the conquistadors. And, uh, you know, the question is, there's so many of them and so few of the Spanish conquistadors. And, and the reason that they do is because the reason that they acquiesce and they stay slaves is that the motivation gets sucked out of them because they don't see that maybe there's hope at the other end uh you know there's maybe there's gold at the other end of the rainbow and so by coming on these talks i think you'll also see that man it's a good world to live in right now like there's 23 year olds becoming billionaires i just read about this woman who's 31 or i think 31 youngest female billionaire uh like all these things you've heard about how bad the world is, that was from a long time ago. The world's not perfect. There's still a lot of pain and suffering, unfortunately. But uh, there, I read an Arabian proverb this morning. It says, where there's health, there's hope. And when you have hope, you have everything, you know? And so if you're healthy, or even not perfectly healthy, but if you have some measure of hope, let it come out, you know, but take action. So click the link. And I'll see you on this live talk. And uh, one other thing, leave a comment. What's something you've learned, maybe as an entrepreneur or watching other entrepreneurs that few people know? I'd love to, I shared three things with you. I'm gonna share 10 more, but I'd love to hear some from you. I learn a lot from these. So click the link and uh, talk to you soon.